Hi everyone, it's David from Automotive Press. As you know, there are more and more competitive models in the compact SUV hybrid area, which includes models like the Mazda CX-50 hybrid built in the US. You've got the all-time favorite Toyota RAV4 hybrid built in the US, Canada, and in Japan. And then we have the Mitsubishi Outlander plug-in hybrid, which is built in Japan, as well as the Honda CRV, which is available in hybrid. So there are many competitors, and this market is kind of flooded with really solid SUVs from Japan, US, and Canada. So where does that put this Subaru Forester then? Well, a couple of things to keep in mind. First of all, this Forester is currently built in Japan in the Guma Prefecture, and I've been to that factory as well, one of the best factories in Japan. So it is built in Japan right now, but keep in mind that starting from uh, this fall, they're going to be building the Forester in the U.S. plant, at least for the U.S. market, that's in the Lafayette, Indiana plant. I've been to that factory as well, but I believe that for Canadian market, the Forester will continue to come from Japan for tariffs reason, of course. So keep in mind that the 2025s are built in Japan, but starting in 2026 model year, will be built in the U.S., at least for the U.S. market. What else can I tell you? Well, in case you didn't know, Toyota owns 20% of Subaru, so there's a fair amount of uh, technology sharing between Toyota and Subaru, which is beneficial for both companies. Subaru has its own character, its own vision and strategy, uh, but it's also utilizing some of the technology from Toyota. This one is a new hybrid model. It's called the E-Boxster here in Canada, and it is a Subaru engine with their own technology, but they have borrowed the hybrid system from Toyota. There's some kind of tie-up and technology sharing. So it's unique to um, Subaru, but also uses some of the components from Toyota, which is a good thing since they are um, the leading edge company when it comes to hybrid system. So those are some of the interesting background, but let me do my full review on the new Forester hybrid or e-boxer, we call it in here in Canada, because it's something that's quite unique about the Forester that will make it stand out among many competitive models, and I'll get into that right after this. Let's go. Welcome back. So this Forester is Japan built, Japan engineered right now in Guma Prefecture, which is kind of far from Tokyo. It's about an hour and a half away. Uh, and it's been a while since I've been to that factory. I hope to visit the Subaru factory again sometime late fall this year. But as I mentioned, it'll be built in the US sometime later this year for 2026 model year. Either way, what I want to do now is to do my usual engineer's audit of the quality of the outside and inside and take it for a drive and let you know if I like it or not. But a little bit of preview, what I do like about the Forester compared to all the other competitors is that it retains something that we all loved about SUVs, which is nice and tall, lots of glass, easy to see, and really good visibility. Those were the signature hallmark features of SUVs in the past, but as the models got changed and evolved over the years, they've shrunk in the window size, and the cars have become more and more like a sedan. So that's why we call it crossover these days. But this Forester retains that big window design, so it feels really airy inside, and I'll talk more about that once I'm inside the vehicle. For now, let's measure the gaps as I always do. Uh, it's actually really good. Three millimeter there, 3.1 millimeter with the perfect alignment. I wouldn't expect anything less from Subaru because they have a really good quality around. 3.3 millimeter, 3.3 again, and actually 3.2 millimeters. So very consistent, all the edges line up. Uh, but most importantly, when I put my finger here and here, uh, that I can tell that um, in terms of alignment, it's also perfect. Like it's, there's not even like a 0.2 millimeter difference between here and here. It's almost exactly right on the dot and it's perfect. And you can also see between the plastic injection bumper and the middle part, this lines up perfectly and even the color matches, which is really hard to do when it comes to kind of the gray color. Many manufacturers cannot match the color of the bumper to the body itself. But in the case of Subaru, it looks all good. All the component looks nice. The car is a bit dirty right now, but every component I see looks fantastic in terms of overall quality. Even with the B pillar, sometimes you see defects in the actual pillar itself, but looks perfect as a plastic component. And just coming around here, all these little details, intricate details, you know what? It's perfect. I mean, would I say it's better than RAV4 or as good as Toyota? Well, according to my measurement I've done before, the actual gaps are better than what I see in the Toyota RAV4, which is usually around 3.5 to 4 millimeters. And in fact, if you go to, let's say, a Highlander, 
the gaps are even bigger, whereas this one is really tight, really well made, and paint quality is excellent. I see very little orange peel, even compared to Toyota models. I think the paint quality is excellent. I would say it's right up there with the Mazda uh, quality. I think Mazda quality is one of the best right now in the world. Absolutely excellent. And the Outlanders are built in Japan as well, and they come pretty close. But if you compare it to Honda CRV or RAV4, I would say the exterior quality on this Forester is definitely better. Let's now take a look inside. Now, before I go inside, let's do a quick uh, paint thickness gauge as well. You guys always know I do this. Let's take a look at the front hood first. It's 132 microns. I do want the thickness to be between 100 to 150 microns. Thicker the better for long-term durability. And uh, let's take a look here. The front fender is 118. This is pretty much standard, I think. 120, a little bit thicker than Toyota models, but not by much. 118, 118. But the amazing thing is that it's very consistent. 118, 120, a little bit thicker on the hood, which is what I want. Because hood gets majority of the damage from chips and stones and so forth. But otherwise, it's very consistent. Most Toyota cars are between 100 to 120. This one is kind of 120 range. So more or less similar to Toyota, but a little bit thicker. And as I mentioned, less orange peel and the overall paint quality is one of the best I've seen so far. Now let's take a look inside. All right, so I'm inside the Forester now. And this is perhaps the most important part of the Forester. It is super airy because the windows are tall and big. You can see how big this is. Also how tall it is on the side. Most SUVs in this class have a higher sill. So they're about here. And oftentimes dash is also higher on uh, cars like a CRV or even RAV4. So sometimes you feel like you're sunken inside the cabin a little bit and it can feel a little bit claustrophobic. Even Mazda have a, a kind of a higher uh, dash panel. But the Forester always had a tall glass and lower uh, panels and therefore you get maximum view all the way around even to the back. And this is something that people loved about SUVs in the past but Slowly and surely, uh, car companies have designed it in such a way that they feel more like a car, less like SUV. But at least with the Forester, they've gone back to the original recipe of what made SUVs really comfortable to drive because it's very airy and open. Not only that, the type of materials they're choosing is definitely better than Toyota, which surprised me because you expect Toyota to have the best materials. But these days, they're really cutting costs and their materials have suffered as a result. Uh, because they use hard plastic everywhere. Whereas in this Forester, this is soft plastic, not just soft plastic, but really nice material with a nice texture. And even here, they have like an Alcantara type uh, material. Uh, also nice finish here. Uh, also nice finish on the roof. And some more Alcantara on the seat. And nice stitching as well. Uh, even textured here in the front, which is kind of unusual texture, but looks nice. So overall, it looks more expensive and also feels more expensive, which is another strength of the Forester. It doesn't look like any other uh, SUVs out there or crossovers. It just looks like a much more upscale type of models. So I really like the fact that Subaru has spent time designing something that looks much more luxurious. You also get 12.3 inches full digital display, but 11.6 inch display here vertically. And I would say if I have to complain, that will be the main thing here. It's actually nice and fast and reasonably easy to use, but we get some controls for temperature, but otherwise the fan control and the rest are over here built in. And as I always said before, I want full manual control or buttons and switches for HVAC and the radios. So thankfully Subaru did keep some of the buttons, so that's really nice. Uh, but I do admit I prefer the side design than the vertical design. Uh, what else can I tell you? Well, again, looks nice here. Design looks good. They have a diagonal cup holder here, but this is a bit further back. So when you put a drink over here, it's actually hard to get out. So they could have moved the whole thing forward a little bit and maybe make this pad for charging station a little bit further in. Those are some minor things that I would have changed as well in terms of start stop for engine is hidden behind the steering, which is my complaint for almost every car out there these days. Instead, what I see is a trip reset button. So when you're just driving like this, I'm often pushing this button instead of that one because I can't see this behind the steering. So why couldn't they have just put this forward right here? I'm not quite sure. Uh, but those are very minor in comparison to more important things, which is things like ergonomics, the basic layout, the type of materials they're using. If I do a punch test, it's super solid here. 
and if I try to look at the gaps between the components and parts, there's really nothing. Everything is really tight fit. So things like fit and finish and over design, the comfort of the seats and all that is first class. Probably one of the best in the world. And like I said, better than the RAV4, although RAV4 is changing and a new model is coming out. So I'll have to reserve my judgment until I test the RAV4 out, which will be sometime late this fall. Uh, but even compared to some of the other benchmark, such as Mazda 650, one of my all-time favorite hybrid models, I would say that this one just feels a little bit more upscale and luxurious. So I love the interior. Now let's go for a drive. By the way, I forgot to mention that Subaru has an interesting approach to the sunroof because it's actually quite a bit larger than what I see in most cars. It's not quite the panel roof, but it is pretty big and opens all the way. Whereas in most cases, you have a panel roof, which is a large glass, but the sunroof actually only opens part way. Whereas on this one, the actual size of the opening is much bigger and you get great, great sunlight here. So very well designed sunroof. I really like this design. And also keep in mind that um, the engine in this Forester is a bit different. It's a 2.5 liter naturally aspirated boxer engine from Subaru. So it is a Subaru engine, but with some technology borrowed from Toyota for the hybrid system. But overall, it's unique to Subaru. And more importantly, there's an actual drive shaft that connects to the rear wheels. So you get an actual mechanical connection in terms of all-wheel drive. Whereas most SUVs out there, including RAV4s, do not have mechanical device connecting to the back and therefore the rear wheels are being driven by electric motors, not by mechanical shaft. And that makes a huge difference in terms of feel and the capability of the overdrive. drive. So I like the Subaru's engine design, the boxer design, which is nice and flat. I like Subaru's design in terms of the all-wheel drive. It's a great system. Subaru is known for that. And I also just like the basic engineering. So it's actually quite an interesting model compared to the Toyota RAV4 and other models. But here's another interesting point to keep in mind is that when you start driving this vehicle, you realize the steering has an actual feedback. The steering is hefty enough, heavy enough, with enough feedback that it makes it kind of feel like a steering feel from a Subaru WRX. I'm sure it's not a coincidence that the actual steering feels mimics that of the Subaru WRX. I'm sure that was designed in, on purpose. And therefore, I really like the steering feel. The Toyota RAV4 is too light, although the new one might be different. Honda CRV is a little bit better and still a little bit too light. Mazda CX-50 or maybe even Mazda CX-5 have a really good steering feel, perhaps the best in the industry. So obviously I like them a lot, but the Subaru Forester has one of the best balanced feel with enough heaviness to the steering that it doesn't feel cheap, it doesn't feel numb. And that's my kind of pet peeves when it comes to all the other compact slash midsize SUVs, they just don't have the right feel. The engine is also peppy enough, it's naturally aspirated engine, so I like that. Uh, it's not super fast when you step on the gas like this, but it does feel a little bit more aggressive than what you will see in the RAV4. I think the overall feel of the Forester is that it's a little bit sportier, has a little bit better feedback, and kind of give you more confidence than something like a RAV4, which once again, is changing for this coming fall, and Therefore, the new version might feel very different when you drive it. We don't know yet. But as it stands now, the Forester has the best steering feel. Uh, Mazda CX-5 slash CX-50, or all the Mazda models for that matter, have the most sporty characteristic. Honda CRV is hard to beat in terms of balance, in terms of overall quality and so forth. I really like the CRVs and also design is really nice. And going back to RAV4 again, the RAV4 has the best resale value perhaps still the best long-term reliability. But if you want kind of like a Toyota reliability with some elements from Mazda for steering characteristic and sportiness, and you still want a very practical, functional SUV with lots of windows and open feel, well, that's Forester for you. And it is unique enough, different enough, that would say it's a true top model. I would consider this because of the steering feel. I would uh, actually take this over the Honda CRV because inside feels more luxurious. I'm not sure about the CX-50 versus this one because I love the way CX-50 drives, but this one is roomier, more open and more practical as well. And so even though there are many competitors, I think the Forester has its own unique character that stands out. The resale value has also been good for Forester and long-term reliability has been really good as well. So overall, if you just don't want to buy the RAV4 like everyone else does, 
uh, then get the Forester. I think it has everything the RAV4 has plus more because it looks more luxurious, has much better steering feel, and it's also still very efficient. But just carrying on with my drive for a little bit more, I also will say that it's very quiet. The ride is really super smooth. It's riding on our Bridgestone Taranza tires right now, which is known for quietness and ride comfort. So noise vibrations, harshness or NVH is top notch on the Forester as well. I guess the only downside to the Forester is the design. People have been complaining that it looks too much like a Ford. It looks too plain. But to be honest, the reason why people buy the Forester is because it is simple, practical, and no-nonsense vehicle with great interior and long-term reliability. So I don't think people are looking for like a really unique design when it comes to exterior. I mean, look at the RAV4. It's the world's best uh, selling car right now. And in terms of design, it looks pretty ordinary as well. So people are not looking for a very unique and sporty exterior design. They want something practical and very functional. And the Forester hits all of those key points and I would recommend it highly over many competitors. So at the end of the day, how do I judge or evaluate the Forester against all the models? I mean, I've been talking about that already, but let me summarize for you. If you want the proven reliability and the best resale value, you still have to buy the RAV4 because no one can beat RAV4 in terms of those factors. And it's still also very good to drive. And obviously we have to wait for the new models to kind of judge and compare against the current model, but you can't beat the RAV4 hybrid. It's just amazing resale value. If you want the vehicle that feels the sportiest and has the most sporty characteristic, then go with the Mazda models, either CX-5, which is changing for 2026, or the CX-50 that's built in the US. Both are sportier than all the competitors and nothing comes close to that. If you want a three row SUV with high quality built in Japan SUV, you have to go with the Outlander uh, from Mitsubishi. It's also one of the few models that offer plug-in hybrid along with the uh, Toyota RAV4, which also has a plug-in hybrid as well. If you want kind of mixture of Toyota RAV4 and Mazda, so balanced driving characteristic with a really good resale value and reasonable price, Honda CRV is still top of my list. It's built in Canada and the USA, uh, but drives well, really good balanced feel, very practical as well. And of course, there are many other brands to consider from Hyundai, as well as Kia and also even Nissan models as well. Uh, but I'm just picking models that have a hybrid model that competes directly with, uh, with this model. And from that perspective, the Forester I think still stands out because no other SUVs have this very open feel with the big, big windows. Uh, this one has the Boxster uh, engine, which I feel has a really good performance. And as I mentioned, the steering feels so much like a Subaru WRX with a solid feel, really good feedback. And if you enjoy driving, you're going to enjoy driving the Forester. And overall, the reliability and resale value have been top notch as well for Subaru Forester. So if you always wanted a hybrid, but you don't want to get the RAV4 because new model is coming, or you don't want to get something that everyone else owns, uh, you want something with a bit of a character, but you want open, airy feel, and a model that still performs well, well, this will be it. Built in Japan, at least for now, uh, the Forester is on top of my list in terms of compact slash mid-size SUVs you should consider buying. I hope you enjoyed my review of the new Forester. If you do, please give me a thumbs up, make some comments. And if you haven't done so yet, would you kindly subscribe as well. Until next video, I'm signing off for now. Thank you so much.